You've heard of the gun show loophole, now Dems on Capitol Hill are bringing you the ammo loophole. TM. Forget perfectly legal personal transfers of guns, these politicians want you to know about the newest and most eminent danger of gun owners <gasps> buying bullets. Maybe I shouldn't breathe so much. <laughs> To close this horrible, ghastly, and dastardly loophole, H.R. 1705 would require background checks for every single ammo purchase. Haters gonna hate, I laugh cause you fake, lawyer man cause I do something that you can't. The bill has been proposed in the House by our dear friend Debbie Washerman Schultz, with 54 co-sponsors, and is on its way to the Senate via good old Richard Blumenthal, who should probably be telling people to call him Dick. Congratulations and celebration. Four states, being Connecticut, Illinois, Massachusetts, and New Jersey, already require gun licenses for ammo sales, and from personal experience, if you go to a bordering state and an FFL sees that you're from one of those states, they either won't sell you anything or will require to see your license from Massachusetts, Connecticut, Illinois, or New Jersey. And as we all know, gun licenses require national background checks. In spirit of this, the new bill would not require a background check if you got a gun license within the last five years. So basically, if you live in a state that doesn't require licensing, your choices are to sit and wait for a background check system that, at this point, will probably get backlogged, or go and get yourself a license anyway. Should the bill pass, law enforcement and military would be exempt because they are always exempt, and the rest of us are just second-class citizens in the eyes of the government. California has already enacted background checks during ammo purchases back in 2016, and New York just rammed it through with the SAFE Act in 2013. Both of these laws have some pretty terrible track records. In New York, they still haven't really figured out how to work it after almost six years, because really, who the hell thinks about the actual mechanics of these things before passing them? In California, Prop 63 ammo regulations have tacked on fees, wait times, and have caused some retailers to stop direct sales with mail delivery completely. But starting in July, California gun owners will not only have to pass a so-called eligibility check, but they'll have to pay for that eligibility check in the form of a fee. And what's interesting about these California rules is that this eligibility check isn't a NICS check. It's a check to see if you are in their database of approved people. If you're not on the list, you might still be eligible for a one-time purchase, but the state hasn't figured out that process yet, because again, no one thinks these things through before passing them. This isn't the first time Debbie and Dick have introduced this bill. They were behind a similar bill last year, which was referred to the Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, Homeland Security, and Investigations, and thankfully died there. But to try and help and make sure this thing passes, Debbie Washerman Schultz and her host of anti-gun groups have decided to name this proposal Jamie's Law, after one of the victims of the Parkland shooting. Jamie's Law, named in honor of Jamie Guttenberg, will require universal background checks on ammunition, just like on guns. Never mind that the gun used in Parkland was purchased legally, and thus any ammo would also have been purchased legally, and that, historically, if someone hasn't been able to buy ammo, they have stolen it. But, you know, none of that matters in this appeal to emotion, laid out in a video with all kinds of other misinformation about how illegal ammo kills thousands of kids a year. This needs to be fixed because these shouldn't end up in the wrong hands. Under this new law, private transfers of ammo would also be banned without a background check, so you can forget just throwing your buddy a box of ammo for fixing the plumbing unless he also shows his license and can prove that a government official said it was the real deal. Only then, according to Debbie and Dick, will we be safe. That is your Second Amendment and firearm news for the day. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment down below. And if you really like my channel and want to help support it in other ways, you can do so over at Patreon or through a one-time donation through PayPal or Bitcoin. As always, thanks for watching. Stay safe and happy shooting.